Obadiah is one of those wonderful books. I gave my children a quiz on this. I could give it to you. What does Esau have in common with this book? And what does King Herod have in common with this book? And uh, what does uh, the Edomite nation have in common with this book? And uh, what does the uh, Edomian population have in common with this book? And what does Job have in common with this book? And, of course, it would be all the same. Job's comforters were from Edom. Uh, the Temanites and the Shuhites were two cities of, of this uh, land of Edom that, that Obadiah is writing to. Uh, Esau's descendants were the people that, that populated this land. Uh, King Herod was an Edomite, of all things, and married to a Samaritan, of all things. And so uh, I'll conclude our lesson tonight by showing you the amazing contrast of uh, a descendant of Esau married to a, a Samaritan facing a true son of Jacob. And that's how we'll conclude the book. It's just a fascinating thing. But I want to give you an overview. Satan is the father of pride. And this whole book is about pride. It's all about arrogance. It's about the effects of proud arrogance. And it's about the reason that God destroyed Edom was because they had magnified the evils of Esau a hundred thousand fold. And they had inflated his wickedness so big that God says, I, I can take it no more. And he destroyed them. Number one, Satan is a father of pride. Number two, Esau was a student of pride. I mean, we're going to look in his life just briefly tonight, but we're going to see that Esau was truly a student of pride. We can see him taking steps and allowing pride <clears throat> excuse me, to rule in his life. And then the conclusion is the, the dreadful effects of a proud, unbending, unyielding heart. Thirdly, Edom was a graduate of pride. What Esau studied, Edom completed. And Edom, of course, is the nation that Obadiah is writing to. They were graduates from the school of pride. But finally, God is the breaker of pride. And if I could say one thing tonight, this entire lesson is preeminently about the incredible need in our lives of humility. And I believe pride is the greatest sin, as we'll see, is the first sin. It is the basis of all sin, and humility is the beginning of blessings. But Obadiah, the deadliness of pride. Between the Gulf of Aqaba and the Dead Sea, lies a range of precipitous red sandstone heights known as Mount Seir. Here Esau settled after he had despised his birthright, and his descendants, having driven out the Horites, Hor means mountain, the mountain dwellers, in Genesis 15, occupied the whole of the mountain, as it says in Deuteronomy. The capital city of Selah, or Petra, which means rock, was a city unique of its kind amidst the works of man, perched like an eagle's nest, and uh, if you want to look at verse 4, it actually says that in Obadiah, if you're open there. It says in verse 4 of Obadiah, you will build high like the eagle, and though you set your nest among the stars, from there I'll bring you down, declares the Lord. Amid, continuing to read, inaccessible mountain fortresses, the dwellings were mostly caves, hewn out of the soft rock, as it says in verse 3 and also verse 6 of the book, and placed where you could scarce imagine a human foot could climb. And that's amazing to, uh, to just be able to go there. Uh, it's a very inaccessible place even today. It's usually accessible only by uh, riding on donkeys. And I remember the last time we were there, my wife was seven and a half months expectant, so the Arabs wouldn't let her on a donkey. And so I walked with her all the way in that little narrow gorge into the red rock city of Petra. But imagine... And just imagine this, that your city, let's say you live in Broken Arrow or you live way up uh, in Nowata or something like that. Imagine your city had been surrounded by brutal enemies. And on one dark night, you managed to escape these enemies that were trying to kill you. And you find yourself safely out of danger, at least for a moment. But suddenly out of the darkness, an unknown enemy pounces on you, drags you back to your city, and sells you into slavery to your original captors that you had just escaped. Only in the morning light are you aware that the heartless bounty hunter was your own relative, your cousin. This is the story of this book. The enemy, Assyria. The victims, the Israelites. The bounty hunter, the Edomites. Edom and Israel related being descendants of Jacob. 
And when the Assyrians came down, all the Israelites that escaped the Assyrian onslaught were rounded up and sold back to the Assyrians by the Edomites, their own relatives. Well, continuing to read in your notes, against this people, the prophecy of the unknown prophet Obadiah, a worshiper of Jehovah was directed. By the way, Obadiah is one of the four men in the Old Testament we know nothing about. 39 of the books, their writers, we know who they are. We know all about them. Four of them we know nothing about. This is the first of the four. We're going to meet the rest coming up. There are 12 Obadiahs mentioned in the Bible. This one is only mentioned by name. He would be a classic ghost writer. He wrote his book. We don't know who he is. Just that he was, as he claims to be, a worshiper of the Lord. To Israel, God had commanded in Deuteronomy 23, 7, Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, for he is thy brother. But Edom had shown an implacable hatred to Israel from the time that he refused him passage through his country on the way from Egypt to Canaan. That's in Numbers 20. To the day of the destruction of Jerusalem by the Chaldeans, when Edom malignantly cried, Raise it, destroy it, in Psalm 137. For his pride and cruel hatred, the total destruction of Edom was decreed by God, as it says in verses 3, 4, and 10. The people were driven from their rocky home five years after the destruction of Jerusalem. See, God waited till Jerusalem got destroyed in 586. Five years later, in 581, Nebuchadnezzar, as he passed down the valley of the Arba, which formed the military road to Egypt, crushed the Edomites. They lost their existence as a nation about a century and a half B.C., and their name perished at the capture of Jerusalem by the Romans. As it says in John 5.29, Christ said, As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee.